call the meeting to order at uh, 533. Okay, um, we're going to start with adjustments to the agenda. Um, uh, we do need to add an action items 8.3. Um, the uh, let's see, where's Tara's? Um, the EEI lease agreement. The EEI lease. Three point three. Yes, we need to add. And somebody will explain. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, is there any other adjustments to the agenda? Okay, then we'll move on to um, motion to approve the uh, minutes from Monday, June 5th, 2023. So moved. Second. All right, moved by Robert, seconded by Bill. All in favor? Saying aye. 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 All right, so, so moved. Um, do we have any public comment? Okay. Do we have any board comments? Okay, well, that I want to acknowledge and to thank the repurposing committee for all they're doing to fundraise money to help support the continuation of the high school building. Uh, this group put on a lot of their time and their talents into raising these funds. Their ideas were pretty innovative. Uh, at Pierce Hall, when for holiday cheese steak, cheese cakes donated to the heat fund. Uh, these ladies donated ingredients, their time, their kitchens to fill these orders. Uh, there was a holiday jumble sale in December with musical entertainment and activities for kids, along with the holiday sale. In April, the White River Valley Players produced a benefit variety show called Turn Up the Heat that thought was kind of, you know, fun and appropriate. Um, they had a campaign to kick off, a campaign kick off booth at the Harvest Fair, alumni appeal letters, um, and you know, really most notably, they pitched in to clean and organize the rooms in the high school this June to prepare for the uh, Green Mountain Suzuki Institute to come in. And so they did a significant amount of work and they really helped um, with that cleanup and, and organization effort. Um, so they were able, the, um, the repurposing committee was able to contribute over $12,000 uh, towards nice. heating the Rochester High School building. So thank you very much for all the work that they've done. Um, I do have a, um, a uh, repurposing project 2023 in review if anybody wants a copy of just like of all uh, that that committee has been doing, what they've been meeting about, um, some of the uh, going through the, these uh, the Rella program and these the phase two studies and stuff. Um, so I have one of those if anybody's interested in just knowing a little bit more. Um, yeah, sure, I figured at least you would take one for me, yeah, and you'll take one too. Perfect. Mm -hmm. um, so on that same note, uh, the repurposing committee um is moving forward with uh the repurposing of the high school and most notably they are looking into creating a non-profit non-profit corporation at this point so um there's really good momentum going forward so i'm very um encouraged by um, what's been happening and where they're going so i think that's um really great yeah i just like to um, second that um, support and appreciation. Mm. Um, the future, so much of the future, I think, in a positive sense, is in the repurposing of our high school, and it, it, it benefits the kids of all ages. Yeah. And um, but it just doesn't happen. People have to work at it, and this committee has been working, 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 working at it. Another thing that ha happened when they were cleaning up. Uh, for the summer was that it allowed the summer music for kids program to have a place that was clean and and um, 
and healthy. And those are kids that basically come from Stockbridge and Rochester for the most part. And uh, so that, and they utilize that space. Um, and thank you to our son in the community. So it's a, it's an example, a great example of community working together. Yeah. Uh, and you're here, here. Great. Excellent. Is there any um, other board comments? Okay. We will move on to the superintendent's report. Are you taking over from the I, superintendent? <laughs> I am. I think his report probably speaks for itself. Uh, we've had, it has, uh, although summer does uh, maybe slow down a notch, there has been a lot going on um, both in our schools over the over the summer with One Planet programming um, and teachers doing professional development. Uh, the administrative team just got all got back from a week together working, or a couple days together, um, meeting up with other principals and administrators across the state uh, at Killington, um, and then also having a chance to meet together and really plan for the, for the upcoming year. So um, that, was a, that was a great meeting last week, uh, supported by the Vermont Principals Association. Um, and, yeah, there's a yeah, there's just been a lot of professional learning going on across the board, and we are sort of making final decisions around sort of uh, calendars that have you know sort of like assessment calendars and in service days and all the different options there. So this is the um, sort of the last big push to the first day of school. So, Excellent. Yeah. Um, does anybody have any questions or comments on the um, superintendent's report? It's kind of a question. I remember growing up um, when summer came, we we hit uh, the pond and, uh, and 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 what kids do is to to uh, spend and hop, skip, and jump in the summertime. And I don't recall any uh, activity going on in the schools in the summertime for the most part. Um, and in fact, I live in a community where if kids were having trouble in school they went to private school rather than they couldn't handle the public school so this has really changed where now it's it, we almost have a, a instead of 12 months but instead of nine months or eight, 10 months it's it's pretty getting close to year round and is that something that's happened in the last five years three years what can you give us some kind of perspective on how we've ramped up to make sure that kids can can continue to learn during the summertime so that they're better ready to get back into school in the fall. Um, how has that progressed here uh, as far as you know? Yeah, well, I don't, you know, I only have, this is only my third summer here. It's certainly been running every summer I've been here. I know it's been, um, the, we've been able to increase support uh, through the allocation of funds related to COVID recovery. Um, certainly summer and after school was one of the kind of the buckets within which recovery plans were written to ensure that we did that. Um, I think the hardest, I think the hardest part is that uh, how do you balance taking a well-deserved break, both for, for faculty and staff and students, yeah. and continuing that learning? And I think we are, you know, continuing to dial that in because uh, we have, I mean, everyone in these buildings works uh, all out from, you know, August 30th to June this year, what, June 21st? Yeah. Um, and so needing a break, but also knowing that there is something, you know, that happens if you, if you don't touch any of this content for uh, eight to ten to twelve weeks, you are gonna you are gonna have a you know summer slide or slip back, and so really trying to think about um, who would benefit most from having more more exposure to content in really fun and engaging ways. There's really there's other ways to come at it sometimes, especially because yeah. the groups tend to be smaller. Um, you know, yeah, the classrooms aren't as big. We sometimes have you know small groups of students that you can really um, get at some of this important content um, in other ways you um, don't necessarily do with a you know a classroom full. So uh, I mean nationally, I think it's been going on for for a while, depending on sort of you know the circumstances of the environment. But I do think it's something to figure out um, how to continue doing it even as the COVID money starts to sunset after next year or after next summer, um, and um, ensure that both our staff and our students get the support and the and the break that they need. Thank you. Yeah, it really sounds exciting and worthwhile. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah, Robert. Uh, I this goes along with my longstanding philosophy that when it comes to instruction, you're dealing with um, uh, competing um, aspects of time, amount of time, the quality of the instruction, and, um, and the quantity of instruction. And in this case, we're extend, extending it by increasing the amount of 
time that we're instructing in the, in the summers, but it's something to always keep in keep in mind that um, uh, when we haven't accomplished our goals, the other other ways is to, to accomplish it by extending the time we instruct. Thank you. Uh, any other questions or comments on the superintendent's report? We'll move on to the principal's report. So you guys have my um, report in hand and it's been a different type of summer because I have to give great appreciation and kudos to our One Planet programming staff. I think that's the piece that I didn't put in here well enough um, for the fact that they have been extremely flexible and supportive of the of hosting summer camp and tutoring while we've had ongoing construction in Stockbridge. So they've been really flexible to adjusting things um, to be able to make sure all our students' needs are met, but also that we're safe the whole time we're doing it. And EEI has been great to work with as well, but it really, um, I think, has been a day-to-day, -day, like, okay, what's going on here? Because this group of outside contractors need to come in and get into this one space that's normally a one planet space during the summer. So I just really appreciate uh, Blythe Bates and her team and that they've been willing to roll with it um, no matter what it brings um, each day throughout the summer. Um, we've had several students participate in summer uh, services, which is about 15 to 20, which is about the same for the past couple of years now. Um, and then for the most part, I think the only thing I'll bring your attention to, and then I know um, construction updates is another is its own agenda item tonight, so I won't dig into that. But um, Rochester's fourth grade was selected along with other schools in the SU um, to participate in the what's called the NAEP, which is the I'm not going to get the acronym right. It it's the National Onda. What's the breakdown? Uh National Assessment of Education and Progress. Yes, National Assessment of the Education Progress in both literacy and mathematics. So that's under first bullet point under number two. Um, and it's a nationwide assessment for fourth graders. Um, and I think the last time anybody in Rochester or Stockbridge was picked was five years ago. So before COVID, they came in and uh, tested fourth grade as well. So, um, that is coming up and that'll be in February. Um, but that's something that's gonna be a little bit different about our school year. Um, yeah, I'll take any questions folks may have. Bill? Yeah, Lindy, on that last one, we'll, I, I'm assuming we'll be getting, you'll be getting the, the administration staff and the results of that test, that national test. And uh, is that true? And then the one thing we'll gain from that is just how we're doing compared with the rest of the nation. Uh, or how do we benefit from this? In other words, if we don't get some information back. We, we do get information. I just don't remember how detailed because uh, we did it so long ago. And I huh. remember doing very poorly on it. I do remember that much, not doing well. So. Um, uh, I will have to look back into my notes. I'm not sure exactly what it'll be. I think it's more of a collection tool that we'll get to see, but also it's how they're gonna, they being the greater uh, like educational oversight in our government, how they're gonna inform progress that our students are making academically nationwide and where kids really are. Um, so that's kind of the tool that it's used for. So I'm not sure like what the breakdown will look like when we get the actual mm -hmm. reports on how it'll inform our instruction, but there is a piece of training that still hasn't happened yet that I'll learn about more uh, later I know on. That, now there's, um, you know, other testing platforms that we are using. Um, is this uh, happening in February going to be in conflict with any of the other, um, you know, normal testings we do is fourth grade or one of those grades that maybe doesn't have as much um, of those testings as other grades or? It'll create an additional day of testing for them. It's not um, it's not going to be in conflict, but it will create an additional testing uh, time that they're not used. Like this is different for them uh, because normally they have track my progress, which is our universal screener three times a year. 
and then we'll the fourth graders also participate in what's called the um the vcap testing or the vermont cap testing at the end of the school year in like april may so this will be something it'll be different but my understanding is it's one morning okay and then we'll go from there great well we do get a, an advantage of one snapshot one one grade in one school mm -hmm. compared to the nation uh, however they do it so well they um, pick like all of fourth grade so they take snapshots from every fourth grade around the country so like they'll do fourth grade and i think right. eighth grade is the other grade they really focus in on typically so that'll be interesting second question i had was on how are we doing with um a staff teacher recruitment are we fully staffed going into uh this fall um, yeah so you're jumping <laughs> jumping which is totally fine um yes we i'm still looking for one part-time position but other than that um i have we have a music teacher for the fall which is great so i'll go through my whole laundry list in new hires but um towards the end of the agenda but yes i have uh classroom teachers for all grade levels in both buildings at this point well, that's something to smile ear to ear, thumbs up. Uh, yes. Next going, I, I like to think that the reason you're we're fully staffed is that uh, your team and you are getting a reputation that this is a good place to to um, uh, practice uh, the teaching profession and uh, taking care of kids. And uh, I ha I really believe that wherever, whether you talk about private or public sector, people check out the company they're joining or the um organization and they want to join organizations that have a future and uh have a good reputation so i i, I this sounds pretty darn good to me it's exciting and i can't uh speak highly enough it felt like we were a little short about i don't know probably three weeks ago and actually our teachers helped go out and find people which i think speaks volumes that they really um we're setting up a place where folks want to bring other folks to come and work with them and are selling it themselves. So that uh, feels pretty, pretty good. That's great. That Thank really you. is great. All right, uh, if there's no further questions for the uh, principal, we'll move on to the business manager's report. Take it away, Tara. Good evening, everyone. You have my report. It outlines what's happening in the business office throughout the month of August. This is an extremely busy time of year for us as we're trying to close out fiscal year 23 and start fiscal year 24, uh, completing onboarding for all the new hires and making sure everything is set up for payroll to start. So busy time. And the biggest thing on my report is the discussion item, which Amy mentioned. We have the final lease agreement documents from the lender and the interest rate you had previously approved was not to exceed 5%, but final interest rate came in at 5.369%, providing a final payment of $39,753.60, which is still within our FY24 budget amount of 42,974. So I do have um, an updated motion for you to approve, which I just put in the chat. Okay, I would like to go ahead to that action item since we are, are discussing it here with Tara. Uh, does, is there any questions? Um, this is the motion that we would need. Anybody want to make this motion? Robert? <laughs> so the lender is who? We should, we should um, the final interest rate of 5.369, but we need to know what's that re referring to specifically. So this is your lease agreement um, to cover the performance contracting that was previously outlined in your February meeting. We are obtaining the lease through municipal lease services and the actual lender is, I got a quick screen here, one second. Flagstar Bank NA. Say that again. What is it? Flagstar Bank NA. Okay. So 
So probably that with um, motion to accept the final interest rate of 5.369% lease agreement with Flagstaff NA. Yes. Okay. So I'd like to make motion to accept the final interest rate of 5.369% with Flagstar uh, Bank NA. I second the motion. Uh, any discussion? Right, it's been a motion, it's been seconded. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All right, that motion passed. Thank you, Tara. Great. Um, is there any other questions uh, for Tara on her um, business manager's report? All right, great job, Tara. I know it's a tough time of year, so keep up the good work. And thank you. Okay, we will move on to the policy committee and the uh, two policies have been put before us as uh, to read through and if there's any um, uh, questions, concerns, uh, next, uh, um, Later this month, the um, SU board is uh, looking to adopt the, these policies and then we would uh, look at adopting them at our next meeting. So this is a good time to read, to read through it, see what any, if there's any questions, concerns, um, comments to be made. Um, I did have a question, concern, comment on the fire and emergency preparedness drill. Yeah. Um, just that it, it doesn't, it speaks to the, um, you know, this options based response drill, um, which is specific to, um, actions to take if com be com being confronted by an active shooter or intruder. Um, but I don't, I don't see where we're talking about, um, also having a, you know, a fire drill anymore. And I didn't know if. Um, this action-based response drill is now in place of a fire drill, or um, if we're going to, if we'll do both. Um, one, I mean, it looked like in the in the fall and in the spring, it needs to be done twice, and I uh, just didn't know if we were also going to have fire drills or. Um, Lindy, thank you. Yep. So part of this, is, so it's the reason it says options-based response drill is because. The state specifically and has not picked. Um, a sh sometimes it's called shelter in place drill. It, it has not picked a specific response uh, within our buildings to if there were an active shooter situation. So it's a conversation that you have as your emergency management team about what works best for your school system because there's there's trainings around uh, high fight flight or shelter in place. So um, the short of it is that's where options-based response comes from. But in our crisis planning and in our emergency management, I'm not sure exactly what language would speak to it, um, but where it says each under administrative responsibilities, the first full paragraph there, it says each school site uh, conducts age-appropriate option-based response drills, including fall drills, uh, fire okay. drills. So the first, 30 days of school in the last 30 days of school, we have to do both. And then you do within 30 days. And then you do, you alternate. So you okay. do a fire drill one month, options-based response the other. And that's part of, we have to keep a log uh, that the AOE can request to see. Okay, so this uh, policy is not restricting to only two options-based. Right. It's just, um, it's incorporating them all together. Yeah. You can't do as many, you just have to at least do one in the fall, one right. in the spring. Okay. Right. Okay. And because our preschools are licensed through um, our, the child care division, they have to do each every month. So we try and keep up with that as well. And same with our One Planet programming. They have to do a drill, each of those every month. So we try and build some of that into our overall schedule because it's helpful to know like, what does that look like at nap time in preschool, right? Or right. what does that look like at lunch time in either, uh, either campus? 
I guess I was just concerned with it being so narrowed in the policy statement that to conduct option based response drills. And then later it's saying on, mm. you know, option based response. I think drills it's, a, I think it's worth a question why it's biannual, at least biannual, but we've all been taught that it's supposed to be once a month. Um, or the definition yeah. option based response drill could include all. You know, it does include intruder, but it also includes other emergencies as well. Right. Like fire, you know, maybe just defining it right. in that space. Yeah. You know. Right. Um, okay. Thank you. Yeah, okay. I think I'm. You know, I'm looking at the administrative responsibilities, which you know, those are the procedures that we would have to put in place in house, and knowing that we do this every month. Okay. Good. Okay. okay. I know. So, Robert, have up, sorry. Yeah. No. Go ahead. Uh, just on the access control and visitor management, um, the school site is, says the school buildings, and I understand why, because we're talking about limiting access, but we don't have any policy concerning um, grounds. Grounds. You know, that's to have what what our policy and control and options are concerning people on coming in on our grounds. So that would all would that would almost be a second a separate policy, right? Right, but I, I would point out that this is broad head heading. This is well, this is very specific and it's not complete to the overall task. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, just go back to the fire and emergency preparedness drills. Um, I had a great deal problem understanding this thing because I kept, kept going back to options based response drills. Mm -hmm. I've never heard of that small caps. And so I'm wondering, is that a, a terminology that comes from a regulation, a law that we have to use this language because um, you know, I'm pretty slow, but I had the hardest time getting my mind around that that term to me it made more sense was fire and emergency preparedness drills. Oh, I understand what fire drills are and emergency preparedness can be anything. And one of the key things is a potential shooter, but I'm wondering here why it should only be limited to a shooter. I mean, it could be any number of people that come in there and threaten the livelihoods or the health and care of our students. And so I have my recommendation is that somehow we, if we don't have to use that, we use the language that we could better understand in reading this document and at least for me fire and emergency preparedness drills uh, I can understand that and then within those drills plural can be a series of options we're going to deal with this problem this problem this inside outside upside downside and um, that would that would certainly help me um, I, I think you want to have a policy that when readers read it they understand it and I'm one um, reader here that had a problem with that go ahead Lindy response yeah so i don't think we can change options based response because uh yeah. it is something that's being used by safety i'm gonna say gurus okay and i think it's coming from uh whereas yeah this is it came from statue that's what i thought so that's why we're using options based response um and if you do read the definition it's not just active shooter it's also intruder so mm -hmm. There's a lot of steps to an options based response. It's not just shelter in place. It could be uh, there's something going on out in the hall. So we want all kids out of the hall. It could be something going on in the parking lot. So there's a lot of scenarios we run through. Um, and that's why I think that term has to be in there in addition to the state statute that uh, Parker just pulled up. Uh, I wonder if also maybe uh, renaming and I don't know, either including that fire in that, yeah, go ahead. No, I think you're right. Like, I think we're, our, our eyes are going to options based because it's under the definitions, but the name of the policy is fire and emergency preparedness drill. And then what we're required to have is an all hazards emergency operations plan. So those are like the, the, I think those are the more inclusive language. So right. whether we include the definition about what all hazards emergency means, or I think it just, it is options based feels newer. So I think it's, it's popped out to us, but the, the plan is all hazards emergency plan. So and then we're ready for, and maybe we what to, we're ready for to change yeah. the um, heading uh, like that that says fire and emergency. Maybe yep. it needs to be all, all hazards, yeah. hazards uh, policy. Yeah. You know, talk about that that option. Yeah. 
Anyway, it's important that going to access, yes, go ahead. access control and visitor management. Um, the question I had there was uh, the hours that we're doing this, and we have basically a sign in, central sign in process um, when somebody wants to come in and the door gets unlocked. And it occurred to me that the schools use beyond um, the normal school day. You could have sports in the afternoon, you could have the PTA at night, you could have a the district board meeting and are we uh it's just basically saying we're going to have a sign-in process for whoever and whenever our school buildings are used and it's a question and it seems to me this limits it to school hours and i'm thinking well gee was what about um before school and after school and vacations aren't we going to lock our schools and keep security and then I was thinking about the administrative unit, um, the SU administrative offices. Why should their hours be based on school hours when you're there probably before schools and probably after school? So I just think this needs a, a good editing job. Um, and uh, it's a good first draft, but I, th I think it needs some work. I'll send this down too. Excellent. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, if there's no further discussion on the policy, we'll move on to discussion items. Uh, seven one, final preparation for board retreat, uh, nine nine. So um, as I looked closer at that date, um, nine nine is our um, town's harvest fair. Um, and I know we had tried to avoid it. I think we had initially thought that it was going to be on the following weekend, the same weekend as Tunbridge. So the following weekend is a, is a, um, is the Tunbridge Fair on the 16th. And I know that our SU, I believe, is going to have a booth there. Um, and uh, if we could avoid that, I think that would be preferable from Jamie's um, point of view, because like I said, he, they, they're going to be having a booth, the, the SU will have a booth there. That's great. Um, that was me. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, when we get to seven point two. Okay, we're almost there. Um, <laughs> but so busy coming at six. So, um, so uh, Jamie suggested that he has um, either the Saturday, the twenty third of September, or the thirtieth available. If that is available for um, any of us, um, or you know, take suggestions. Does anybody um, have availability on September? Uh, August, September 23rd or 30th, that's a Saturday, about 9 a.m. I can do both. Okay, I'm available for both as well. Same here. Okay, okay Pat looks good for both. I can do both. It's the 23rd or the 30th. Both are Saturdays, the last two weekends of September. Yes, I'm pretty sure. Okay, and Justine? Sorry, yep, I can do both. Can you do either one? Wow. Okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Sorry. I think Amy, I, I can't do the 23rd. Sorry. Okay, Lindy cannot do the 23rd, but can you do the 30th? I can, yes. Sorry. Well, we definitely would like you involved. So let, if, if uh, the 30th works for you, then let's let's put in the 30th. Yeah. Okay, right. September 30th. Now, um, uh, Bill has sent me some ideas for some agenda items, um, you know, you know, looking at, uh, you know, where we are, where we've come, talking about our, our board goals and our governance, um, um, you know, and a, and a number of different things, uh, going over some Robert rules. Uh, also, one I thought would be a really good discussion item is to talk about our um, annual uh, meeting, our annual budget town meeting, and uh, discuss, you know, maybe why we are doing it the way we are now, and is there a way that we can maybe improve, improve upon it. I think that, you know, could be a worthwhile um, uh, conversation. So if anybody has other, you know, some more agenda items or other things that they would, you know, want to try to talk about at that retreat, please um, email them to me so we can, Jamie and I can indeed put together a, a, a bit of an agenda for that day. All right. Perfect. Okay, let's move on to 
Lyle, 7.2. Welcome. He's got his hand raised. You're still muted. There we go. There we uh, go. Hit the wrong little button there. I know. Do it all the time. <laughs> yeah. My computer's dead at the end of the day, so I'm having to use my phone here. Um, so you guys just wanted um, a report on what we did insulation-wise at the high school. Is, is that what I'm gathering? So, um, yeah, there's, um, you know, we we are, was meeting with the repurposing committee. Um, I know they had met with you a little bit about some ideas of some heat mitigation, some stuff that we can, that we, actions that we took, have taken, are going to take. Um, to just help reduce the, the cost of heat over there. Um, and I know there was a specific question, well, I guess it's the next agenda item about the, the roof, but um, you know, what have we done to, to help make that uh, building a little more efficient? I know I'd heard possibly some things that you had been working on with circulators. So uh, if you could yep. just enlighten us, that would just be great. Yeah, so what we did is we met with um, a gentleman from Efficiency Vermont who came with a thermal imaging camera and we walked through and looked for problem spots where we were losing heat or where cold was pouring in. And we identified quite a few issues, um, which prompted me actually to buy that little thermal camera because it's something that plugs in your phone, which is a super useful tool. So now I have one too. Um, nice. Yeah. And um, so we, we found when we got our heads above the ceiling tiles is that in, in many areas, and I took a couple of videos that I tried to send to Jamie, and I don't know if he was able to open them or not, but I certainly can share them. We'll figure out a way to share them if you want to see them. Um, in, in many cases, they, they, they pretty much depended on having like uh, just bats of fiberglass insulation placed in a certain spot and never moving. And the reality is lots of those bats of insulation had been moved over the years because of people trying to do maintenance up there, people, you know, moving wires around and so on and so forth. So what happened is essentially you have vented um, uh, soffits at the edge of the, the building, which are meant to keep the attic cold um, so that you don't um, make ice and melt snow and all stuff. But that same vented attic area in many cases the only thing that kept that cold air from getting into the building was the thickness of a ceiling tile and uh, i kind of referred to it as like well, it's not a cafeteria area. it's that big open area i'm not sure what that was used for but that area in particular has a large metal beam that goes across and above the beam there was no insulation and it was a gap of you know three to four inches and below the beam before the ceiling tiles hit was a gap of maybe six inches and you could literally look under or above that beam and see the daylight from the soffit vent. So essentially the outside air had, there was nothing stopping it from getting in above that ceiling tile. And that was the, that's what you had for insulation. This is in one, that one large common area in the, yeah. in the high school. So yeah. it, it used to be the library, that large open area with classrooms around, yeah. okay. That area. So, but there's different, you know, it looks like there's different ages of construction or something, or part of it has an attic above it. And of course that's much less of a problem. So we weren't getting a lot of bad thermal imaging issues there, but anywhere where we had that soffit vent, um, if the insulation wasn't up on top of the, the tiles, you had nothing. Um, it was the same in that back art room area where we had um, water damage and the tiles had been destroyed same deal you could see where the uh, the air was getting in there from the soffit vents so we repaired all those tiles and repaired all that insulation um, um my contractor friend lent me one of his guys on a saturday and he and i brought up a bunch of insulation and we, we just found all those problem spots and re-insulated all those areas and replaced all those bad ceiling tiles it's not perfect the bad design for sure um, but I think it's a much better situation than we, than we had when we started. The other thing that we focused on was because you have unit ventilators in some of those places, um, you have these things called relief dampers so that if the building overpressurizes, um, from bringing in outside air, it has a way to one way flap basically out. It's called just a relief damper. It's exactly what it's described. 
And really those relief dampers, what they were really doing is just letting cold air in because the flappers had long since failed. Um, some, of them, some of them, it looks like they had put some white thin styrofoam in there, but it wasn't very well fitted. Um, probably because a teacher had complained that there was a cold draft coming through there or something. Um, so what we did is we took every one of them apart. Now there's probably a dozen of them or something. It's again, that certain type of that age of the building, that section had this, this system in it. We went through and put in a uh, well-fitted uh, two inch styrofoam board and then taped, taped all the joints too. So it, in the end, those, when we hit them with a thermal camera at the end, they were actually warmer than the wall. So that was, <laughs> um, so yeah, we just tried to tighten it up basically and put our heads above the ceiling in a lot of places. And we left some insulation on site. Um, and I, I'm sure that we'll find other areas when it gets cold. If we find more areas, we'll have some supplies there to keep, you know, keep on doing those measures. But I think we're in much better shape now that we have a little better understanding of how the building was designed and found some of the really bad spots. That's really wonderful to hear. That's, now this, that's great. The circulator pump, um, we we had, um, I took three of them out of the old Burlington High School that were the newer newest ones that we had. And I know they were running when we shut the building down and I believe they're gonna be able to be a fairly ease, easily retrofit um, installation to replace three of the missing ones in the heating system. Because right now you have places for six circulator pumps. You have three zones but their purpose in life is to have some redundancy. So if one fails, the other one comes on, which is what happened to us when we froze up once we lost the circulator pump and that whole zone didn't have a secondary circulator pump to take over. So our goal is to get all six circulator pumps operational. And uh, so we, we do have some redundancy. Uh, Jesse's working on getting those uh, installed by PLUFs. Um, apparently she had a health scare and so she hasn't been around, but she's going to reschedule that appointment to get those installed or at least look at the installation of those. So hopefully going into the winter, we'll have a little, little more redundant system in place. That's wonderful. Uh, the insulation work, all that initial work you were talking about, um, was that done on um, this winter? Was that done this spring? When, when was it done? Just so we, we're kind of wondering, you know, what we'll see as a, a change in maybe the cost of heating, of course. I think I'd have to look back at the timesheets, um, but I think it was a couple of months ago we did that. Okay. Yeah. So more towards the spring. Yeah, this season we'll see, you know, this coming season we should see the difference. Okay. Great. Uh, Robert? Uh, well, there was some discussion at the re repurposing that Jesse is stretched awfully thin. And if there's any work that, that members of the repurposing committee can do, such as monitoring temperatures or whatever, um, we would like to be involved with that. Um, if I, I don't know what the schedule is for checking the building, especially during the winter, but um, we could, we understand that Jesse is, has way too many things on her plate and we could augment her. Great. Excellent. Is there any um, other questions for Lyle uh, concerning 7.2? Uh, yes, I will go ahead. And, is that okay if we take public comment? Just on this issue. Yeah. Hi, Lyle. Vic Robato. Um, could you comment on just heat control in the sense that during this past winter, there were a couple of days when high or others were in the building for one reason or another, and it was really, really running hot. Um, around lo the lobby to the auditorium, for example, and maybe a few other places. Is, is that a matter of thermostat control or holes in the roof and just keep trying to heat the outside atmosphere? <laughs> what, what might cause that and what might be done to fix it? Uh, so your, your system there is, is a pneumatic, uh, which just means you have an air compressor that uh, builds up, you know, up to 30 PSI. And the thermostats in there, of course, are from 1970s. And um, essentially, their their default, if they fail, they fail full heat. So uh, we've had the pneumatics control guy go through and check uh, thermostats there a couple of years ago now, I think it is. <clears throat> it's probably due for him to go through 
when it, when it gets a little cooler because it's impossible to test things until the temperature drops a little bit and then you can actually see how things are operating. But it's likely that um, if it's super hot in one area, uh, a couple of things could have happened. When the flood happened, um, the plumbers basically just made sure that heat was flowing everywhere and it, it could have pulled off a pneumatic hose to that thermostat or cut it inadvertently and that would make it react and, and just go to a full heat situation because that you want them to full you want them to fail in full heat to keep from freezing up so if the compressor died or something like that and you lost air pressure default is to heat so i suspect that either it's a faulty thermostat or a result of the emergency work that happened there and probably it needs the pneumatic line needs to be reconnected or something like that and related to that back in the shops area that ceiling mounted heating unit was going like an inferno um, yeah that was that one was i think the, that one they, they may actually have um i know they had a motor problem with that and they changed out the motor and i know jesse had been working with the the contractor to get that to operate properly again but again i think they felt you know having it go full heat was better than having to do nothing. Um, but certainly I know there was some control work that was happening to that one. I think it's it, because we've had so many different things happen there. I think it's probably uh, wise to spend a little bit of money to have uh, Brian Boucher come back and just get as much control of the building back as we can, as cheaply as we can. Thank you. Thanks. Sure. I just want to um, also mention that the, that that that's happened to the auditorium as well as the, the and that's a large space that's being heated. So if if he's yep. looking at places, that's a, a special place to to check. Yep, I think we'll on our schedule to um, say in late September or something when it cools down. Uh, to get him to go there and put everything through its paces and just make sure we've got as much control as we possibly can with the system we have left. Excellent. Cynthia? Yes, um, I'm wondering about the areas underneath the tall windows that don't have any insulation under them. Most of them are metal and some had plywood put over them, but there was never any insulation put in. A lot of them don't have anything under them. It's just right to the outside wall. Have you looked at that? I haven't paid a lot of attention to the windows. I will say I believe we have quite a bit of styrofoam board on site that we could put in places like that if we feel that that's you know a useful use for that material. It was always extremely cold. Right? Yeah, they're all steel pane windows. Yeah, it's not great. And they don't work good at all. Excellent. Well, um, thank you for all the work that you have done. Yes. Um, yes. It's thank really you. wonderful to identify these areas and, and to, to you know, kind of get our most bang for our buck, uh, getting that insulation and that ceiling. So that's that's wonderful. I appreciate the update. Yep. Um, is there any further questions on 7.2? Um, otherwise, we will move on to 7.3, which we still need Lyle for uh, in regards to the um, auditorium. Yes, Robert. Oh, uh, just a question. If, if, do we have any recording temperature monitors around the high school at this point? Um, about, I don't know about recording. We have um, low temperature alerts wired in the building so that if something happens, we'll know quickly enough. The, the problem last time, as you probably remember, was it was somehow programmed uh, in reverse. So it was, it was programmed to go off on temperature rise, not temperature fall. Which <laughs> Okay. Did not want to up. Um, but anyway, um, so I know we have that. I don't know if we have any data loggers. Um, because we don't have a direct digital control system, but rather pneumatics, that's not something you know that comes with an old net pneumatic system. All the new DDC control systems have data logging capabilities and trending and so on. We we don't have anything like that in that building. You can get fairly cheap data logging equipment that you know would report to Wi-Fi that's for sure it's not a huge deal but okay. is this something that would be welcomed if the uh, repurposing committee could come up with uh, with uh, that equipment 
Um, I don't have any problem with it. Uh, it would it would give us an idea of where we had problem spots, um, but that's going to lead to more service calls to address service you know issues. Um, I I I like knowing when something's going wrong. That's for sure. I like you know alerts. I, the the fact that we have freeze control monitoring is is huge to us now that it's programmed properly. Um, more of that I would welcome. That's for sure because the more of a head start you have to go and and you know, figure out what's going on, the better off you are service wise. Okay. So great. 7.3. Okay, 7.3. Um, uh, the auditorium roof. Uh, Robert has asked for this on the agenda, so I'll go ahead and add you. Yes, there's a, a place that many people have reported to me that uh, right down at the, the uh, in front of the thrust. We end up with pools of water, um, have, uh, and has this has been going on for I don't know, not it's quite a, some time, at least a year, uh, and it hasn't been addressed. And we're just concerned it's it's hitting hitting the um, the ceiling tiles and such, but it's just indicative of a problem, a longstanding problem that hasn't been addressed. Is is Jesse aware of where where this leak is? So that I can, I've got to have. Um, I typically have rod roofing go there, um, the elementary school to check that roof out before the winter. But we could probably have them check that out at the same time when they're on site to uh, avoid two charges. But if if she can describe where the issue is, then that would help. And I it's the first I've heard of it. So. This uh, yeah, I was just going to share. Rod roofing was there prior to all that. What they came in end of June prior to all that heavy rain we've been having. Um, and then he came back after the heavy rain to check in on stuff. So I'm just curious, Robert, if you've heard of that, because it was reported to me as well. Um, but I'm curious if you've heard of it through the July time frame, because that probably happened right at the end of June, beginning of July, that they came and worked on the high school roof. I, I am not aware. Of any reports. Okay, since. I will double check with Jesse, but I just wanted to share that they have come in just recently prior to all this heavy rain and worked on it. Okay, so I didn't so know if that addressed the issue or not. I just wanted to ask. Okay, well, maybe we could right, try to uh, see if that issue has indeed already been addressed. Because right. when she checked the building after the first round of flooding, I guess is what I should call it at this point, or heavy rains, the beginning of July, uh, there was nothing in the high school. Oh, good. So um, there was only a concern in one area in the elementary, but I just wanted, it's a big space. Well, maybe, maybe if you know of the exact specific location, then we can just verify that. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's right in front of the first row of seats okay. where, the, where the thrust is. Yeah. Under, under the auditorium, left to right, we end up with a puddle there. Okay. Okay. Great. Oh, yeah, nine years. Yep. I'm close. Yes. I remember that puddle. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, hopefully it has been addressed yes. and it's a non issue, but um, if not, we, we now um, can address it. Perfect. Great. Um, 7.4, uh, summer capital project upgrades on EEI from principal Stetson. Yep, so we're um, on track right now to have teachers back in the building by the 23rd, um, which is earlier than in service. Um, so we're kind of in the final steps this week. They're sheetrocking the ceiling back in um, Stockbridge. So they've We've taken the ceiling down and put in all the ductwork uh, for the new HVAC system um, that will go into Stockbridge, um, as well as updating all those controls to DVC controls, uh, just like Lyle was talking about. So that's a work um, in progress and they should be, I, I don't wanna jinx myself. I'll know more Thursday. I meet with them every Thursday. Um, the rain definitely slowed things down for a little bit because they had to get up on the roof because um, that's where the HVAC unit will go. Um, we will have temporary units to start the school year because the brand new unit will not be here till September 21st. And then they will install it, but it's all prepped and ready to go uh, for the installs and the temporary units will work and are working right now. 
Um, Wonderful. So we should be good to go. Uh, the lighting will happen once school starts. We don't have a specific date on that um, yet, but they'll be able to come in after hours and update that. Um, it will mean in Stuckbridge because pretty much all that HVAC work down the hallway um, required the ceiling tile to be torn out that, and the lighting to be done. It's all prepped for the install that will have temporary lighting in the hallways to start. Still well lit, still everything, but it won't be the new lighting that we're expecting. Um, in Rochester, uh, the oil tank is gone. Um, yeah, it was huge. It was an impressive operation. So it was dug out, removed. Um, they have the asbestos has been abated in the boiler room and part of the gym. And then that front closet, when you first walk in, um, they have been in the boiler room because the boiler's here. So they've been putting it together with all the piping. All the piping is done in all the classrooms. And now they're in the process of installing the new radiation. Um, and I believe um, if they haven't already, that by the end of this week, the new backup propane tanks will um, will be in and underground and the um, pad for the silo where the wood chips will be um, stored will be is done so we should we're again on a great right on track and the dvc controls um, they're in the process of wiring those throughout the um, classrooms and offices and then again lighting will be um, a little bit later but there was no lighting taken out for the process of this project. So kind of where we are. Excellent. And you're, you're feeling comfortable and confident um, of where this project is and that's good. Yes, uh, we seem to be off in the right places. They'll still be working in the gym pretty close and the boiler room pretty close to the start of school, but everything else will be um, out of the way and ready to go. So Once yeah. it's in, it'll be a game changer. So it'll, it'll uh, really yeah, I'm so excited. So excited yeah. to yeah. not wonder. <laughs> We're going to have heat in the morning. Good. Uh, or be able to do hot yoga. We had one or the other. So um, okay. <laughs> I'm excited about that. Wonderful. Good. I, I will not miss that steam boiler one little bit. No. Oh. <laughs> and I up it last week and checked on several of the projects and I felt good about what I saw mm -hmm. too. Now it's, it sounds like it's even further along. So I'm happy with the progress. And I, I do keep in touch with Eric to make sure everything's where it needs to be. And he's been in good communication with me. There you go. Wonderful. It's, it makes me feel very confident and comfortable that it, you know you are involved in this project. And, mm -hmm. and I'm, yeah, and I'm very happy that Lindy's you know, saying all this with a smile on her face. So um, you know, I, I'm, this is wonderful. Thank you. You're welcome. Very happy to help. Yeah, I was thinking, uh, thank heavens, uh, the tank got pulled and there was no leakage. Yeah, yes. correct. Uh, you want to talk about spending money. Um, you know, it's like finding asbestos when you don't expect to, and then leaky tanks can, can just break every budget. This is a question either for Lindy or for Patrick on, we were uh, blessed to get a, um, a used uh, solar system. Mm -hmm. Um, that we were going to at some point install on the Stockbridge Central School's roof and, and save some energy uh, uh, once that's installed. And um, is that still in the so-called pipeline or is it all depend on whatever? I was thinking we need to do these capital improvements there first, but um, if either one of you know what where that might stand, uh, the, 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 the donated solar system that would go on the roof. So it's in the pipeline to be done because you guys had approved it. One of the advantages of this EEI work is they um, went in and uh, reframes not the right word while with the roof, but they like added more to it to be able to support the unit, which only benefits us yes. with putting the solar panels on the roof as well. Um, so we haven't really moved forward with the install yet because it kind of feels like let's at least get one thing, <laughs> yeah. one thing done first. Yeah, you have to do some structural work there too. Thank so. you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Great.
All right, is there any other further questions, comments uh, on the summer capital projects? That's great, thank you so much. All right, we will move on to our book club. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, chapter seven of our um, book study was uh, the governance job, systems thinking and strategic action. Um, I have to say, you know, each time I start a chapter, I, it does take me quite a bit to, to get into it. It really is like, what am I reading? But then a few pages in, I, it, it's flowing and it's, oh yes, that's it. We are doing it that way. And, and, oh, we could improve and do it a little bit more this way. So, um, uh, it's, this is great. Uh, I'll let Bill take it away since he is our study leader. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is it is hard um, if we put the book down. Sometimes you're reading a novel and you can you can uh, go on vacation, whatever the case, come back and pick it up where you lost and unless it's a whodunit, one of those uh, novels. But this one, um, it takes a little while to get back into it. The author does kind of say what he's going to say and then says it and then recaps it at the end in a, in a conclusion. But there, he mentioned five governance responsibilities of a school board. And again, this could be true of, of, of any governing boards, but they're important. The first one is the strategic direction. And we're trying to do it here. And, and the SU board did it in a big way of coming up with a strategic plan for the SU. And if you haven't read that strategic plan recently, I'm gonna bring one to the retreat because goal six of the, of the SU strategic plan talks about um, effective school governance, meaning us and all the district boards. And uh, it's a good checklist to see if we're meeting those goals that were set within our SU strategic plan. But again, the author's trying to get us not to go into the minutiae, not to get into the, the weeds. It's the bigger picture and looking, trying to always look forward. Um, so that's huge. Talking about policy direction, and we're going to talk about that, I think, a little bit in the retreat. We've got a ton of policies. One question I have, I think we should talk about is, are we aware of the policies? Are they accessible? Should we have a mechanism for us to start reviewing these? And I think the state is going to be encouraging us to do that as a school board or, or review policies, uh, each policy within three or five years. So that's a but these policies are powerful so we don't have to reinvent the wheel when something happens. We can go to the book and um, get guidance that way and not stumble over uh, a reaction or a um, inaction that wasn't fully thought out. And as you know, as we've gone through these policies, some of them have taken you know, five or 10 mm. drafts before they got a right. And then not only for the SU board, but for each district board. So there's a lot there. Stewardship, I think, is a real powerhouse that I think this board does a lot, but that is to take care that we're supporting the people that get the things done, that achieve these goals, that uh, that help our students excel. And, and we never can forget that at all. I think we're really good on that. We see the budget as a there's a plan of action. It's more than money. It's how we're going to carry out these policies, how we're going to carry out these goals. Well, that gives us the money in there. And I think the board's really strong on that. And I've been impressed that this board doesn't get into the weeds so much. It's the bigger picture, on, even on the budget. And I think that makes those budget more coherent and uh, valuable. Um, the fourth one is oversight and accountability. And we've done that. You know, we've got uh, our protocols. And then uh, a while back, we measured ourselves, evaluated how well we were meeting those protocols. And then um, I think it's appropriate each year that we revisit the protocols. Are those the ones we want to continue? Do we respect them? Do we need to add them or something like that? But an accountability is, is are we holding our administrative team uh, accountable through the superintendent? And um, not every SU in the state of Vermont has a robust um, superintendent evaluation program like this SU does. And one of the powers is that it's well, very well crafted. It's consistent over the years. So we can compare 
last year and two years. Uh, and it also um, establishes um, goals that the superintendent sets for the approval of the SU board going forward. And one of the things we need to be is aware of the superintendent's goals and uh, what we're doing consistent with or supporting those goals. So, mm -hmm. um, and the last one is community leadership. And I'm, I need some help there. It's, but it's, uh, I noticed in Lindy's report, or I guess it was in Jamie's report that our equity coordinator is going to uh, pick up and continue these community um, gatherings that I thought were very, um, it's not the only thing. We've, uh, we've got uh, Jamie's reports. We've got all the information coming from our, our uh, principals throughout the SU. Um, but we have to remember that we're part of the community. We need to have that, that link. And so I thought the author did a pretty nice job on that, but I'd be interested in anybody else want to sharing something that um, that's that struck you as something that is important or useful uh, or a waste of time. <laughs> well, I, yeah, go ahead. Uh, well, I think that it struck me that the, we could do better in um, community leadership of mm -hmm. just as the SU is having a, a, a table at the um, in uh, Tunbridge, Tunbridge Fair, Fair we, we have our own local events. There, I believe there's one in Stockbridge, and we certainly have Harvest Fair in, uh, in Rochester that we can make a presence to a little table in the tent. I'm not sure if the board would be interested in. And that would be a um, table in a tent for the school? It would be the district. It'd the be, district. Right, just to maybe the, um, mm -hmm. yeah, the celebrations. Are happening in our district. Yeah, and letting people know the great things that are happening. Mm -hmm. right. So many of us, they go back, oh, I remember 10 years ago of this problem, or I was really pissed off on that problem. And things have changed and are changing every single week and year. Mm -hmm. And um, we need to get that good word out so that parents want to live here and send their kids here. Um, and the kids aren't tuition someplace else. They want to stay in our district no matter what their grade level is. So that's a that's something that we should probably talk about more in at the retreat, Robert. Right. Well, I think that I mean, it's it's not only heralding some of the you know the, the, the celebrations. I think just putting out there our our fundamental philosophy, which is in, repeated over and over again in our our uh, reports. That you know we're we're doing evidence based learning. We have set goals, and this is where we are on them. Mm. You know, it's, this is we, and it, it isn't just guessing. We we measure, we measure our student performance a lot, and we are seeing improvements. Which is and when it doesn't improve as well as we want, we modify our approach. Mm. You know, that's that's the really, one of the important um, um, things that we are do that's making a difference is that that you know the, this is all I've I've in previous way back years we would have oh well we need better math scores and they say well maybe we'll do a program yeah. and they'd run a year and then say oh well how's it going well yeah you know it's it it wasn't very scientific it wasn't it, it was just a, it, it wasn't measured, and but we are doing it now, and the, and and it's effective. Any other comments, uh, suggestions um, on chapter seven? Yeah, it re I um, it just reminded me of our mission vision work, and yeah. you know, kind of it was kind of like put on the back burner when budget came up and. Some of the stuff we were doing, you know, kind of ties into the community outreach. I remember um, we were talking about having, you know, binders outside of the classroom with different things to show, to try to communicate to parents what, uh, um, what's actually going on, you know, when they could be hearing and reading about these acronyms and stuff, be able to look and kind of apply it directly. I think um, Robert's idea of, of, of uh, engaging in the community at these events would be helpful not only to share what what we're doing, but also give a um, a venue for the community to be able to ask questions and share their concerns. I feel like I, while some people come to the meetings, or you know, it's usually when there's like 
you know, something dramatic going on, but I'm not sure if everybody realizes that they could just log in and, and learn. I think, um, you know, it just reminded me of these ways to connect with the community and, um, yeah, with the focus on our, our mission vision and wanting to revisit that. Okay. Thank you. Maybe I'll uh, be uh, something we can really discuss more at our retreat to see if that can fit into the agenda. Yeah, like, great. Thank you, Justine. Very I was thinking good. at the retreat, we talk about do we want to continue to have kind of like a reading mm -hmm. uh, board development device it doesn't have to be books it could be articles it could be podcasts it could be just discussions on whatever but i think it's timely to say how did this go and do we want to do something like this or something different going on excellent um and i mean i underlined a couple of things uh in the chapter in um under you know setting a strategic direction um you know i really highlighted that uh it is important, like in this work, this climate, this we're change. Everything is changing so rapidly, and it's really important that we we you know acknowledge that and and that we um, we really try to to you know the board's ability to, to chart a direction for the future depends upon maintaining its work and addressing new challenges and like it's really important to be forward thinking and that it is changing fast and we have to adapt mm -hmm. um and that is you know can be very hard um you know and i think we do a fairly good job but i think that you know spark man that is a very important thing for us to keep in a um, forefront um it's a question of being proactive versus reactive exactly exactly Excellent. Uh, is there any further discussion, comments on the reading or book at this time? I do think that is one of the things that, that you had mentioned for the retreat is to evaluate what yeah. we've just done and talk about how we want to go forward. And I yeah. think mm -hmm. that's important to, for us to discuss. And the, the retreat's a really good time to let our hair down and, and do that. Excellent. Uh, is if there's no further um, book club discussion, um, we will move on to new hires slash resignation. Yep. So I have a list of folks that I'm excited uh, to introduce um, to you all tonight, um, and they're coming. This information is also going out to families here by the end of this week, beginning of next. Uh, week as folks finish the hiring process, which means all their paperwork and stuff like that. Um, so just to be completely transparent, some of these names are new to parents as well. It's not because we're hiding it. It's just the hiring process takes a little bit longer <laughs> than anticipated. Yeah. We want to make sure folks sign on the dotted line before we announce this. But um, Yes, definitely. <laughs> uh, so um, we're excited to have a new preschool teacher in each building. One is uh, Burley Griffith is not so new to the Rochester community as he's been our um, paraeducator in the preschool classroom for at least five years, if not longer. Um, and he will um, be taking Lauren Skaski's um, place. Jessica Langois will be joining us um, and she will be the preschool teacher in Stockbridge coming year. Uh, Megan Hartley uh, will be the kindergarten teacher in Rochester. Um, Grace Ulrich will be the second and third grade teacher in Rochester. And that's kind of the position we were never able, able to really replace when a teacher left us uh, the end of July, beginning of August last year. So um, we had to change configurations. So we'll be able to, um, we were able to find someone to actually fully replace that person. Um, also in um, Rochester will be Robert Moffat. He will be 5-6 slash math and science teacher for upper elementary. Um, in Stockbridge, our 4-5-6 math and science person um, and classroom teacher is Karina Dobson. And then our music teacher who also will be working in Chelsea and will be working in Rochester and Stockbridge is Jeffrey Perry. 
Wow. And that's that's all. I shouldn't say that's all. We have really great people. I'm really excited for them to come and join. And some of them have already been attending some professional development um, and already started to meet each other. So that's been great as well. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, well, I'm glad to hear that we are, uh, you know, full again. <laughs> well, it, it feels a little better than it did a couple of weeks ago. I, I, I can imagine. So, I'm reading by your smile that not only the positions fill, but you seem very pleased professionally about the quality of candidates that yeah. come our way. And because uh, it's more than somebody in the classroom, but it's somebody that can turn on learning and uh, to every kid uh, right. as possible. And uh, it sounds like we've got some talent joining us that um, can help us with that. Yeah, I would say all these folks are really student centered, which is why we're here. So um, I'm excited for them to join us. And I don't know, it, it, it'll be here in the next couple of weeks. So I'm excited for it to get started. Thank you. Uh, do we have any, are we going to have any language? I did sure. not have luck. It's still out there. So it's not to say that it can't happen. But right now I have not had much luck in that realm. Um, so I don't have a great um, solution for that at this time, but um, yeah. So I something we're still looking for, if that makes sense. I want to commend you on what yeah, I had a lack of a music teacher last year. And we used artists and residents to fill in some of the, those holes. And, you know, if we can use the, be inventive in that fashion. Yeah, absolutely. Right, kind of do some type of artist in residence type uh, language. Uh, yeah. You know, just, just yeah. Uh, you know, to do a small unit of introducing whatever, you know, Portuguese or, you know, whatever, maybe someone local uh, is able to mm -hmm. just expose the kids to, you know, just. Yeah. Uh, I remember when uh, my daughter was in kindergarten, somebody came in and just, you know, did. Um, head, shoulders, knees, and toes with them in another language, uh -huh. and like she remembers that. You know, right. she, wasn't a big thing of learn, you know, like this big thing, but she remembers it. And she was exposed mm -hmm. to it, so awesome. um, that's definitely important. So great. Okay, uh, that's wonderful. Um, is there any uh, public comment? I don't believe we have any public on, do we? Okay, so. You have another comment? Yes, Just, go ahead. Um, I don't know if um, the Vermont School Board Association sends us these notices um, every week or every two weeks and that sort of thing, but they're jam packed of it through information. And I was just looking at the most recent um, update and it, it, you can see here's what, what it shows on your, when you click on that on it's your email SU, they send, they send us an email update. But they've got a ton of podcasts yes. uh, that are coming up. And I just want to read some here. They've got best practices for school reports, yeah. school board chair, vice chair networking, where you can just kind of talk about ain't it just awful or point with pride. <laughs> New board members and networking. Okay, because I went through that and, and it's nice to talk to somebody else that's as clueless as I was. Um, the opportunity of governance standards, the state just adopted, I think, 95% of what the task force recommended on governance standards. I was on that task force, but we're going to need to carry those standards out. And we're doing a lot of that right here at our side. Um, but there's going to be a webinar on that. And then there's a regional meeting, on, uh, Zooming of the school boards in each region. And ours is coming up with the Windsor County. And um, so it just gives you an idea that, that there's a lot going on and that if, we, if we, we can read, we can listen, and other times we can explore with other people that are doing the same responsibility. Right? So I just recommend that you just kind of open up this email when it comes and just kind of scan it and see if there's anything there that's helpful to you. Um, okay. Cool. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Bill. That's yeah. definitely uh, important. That's a good idea. Yeah. 
There's definitely a lot of resources out there through yeah, um, the VSBI, uh, so it's great. Okay, um, our next regular scheduled uh, board meeting is going to be Monday, September 4th at 5.30 in Stockbridge. We um, then will be meeting September 30th for our retreat. So uh, please, if you have some ideas, some stuff you want to hash out at the uh, retreat, please let me know so we can uh, make sure to work that in so everybody's voice is heard for sure. Uh, does anybody have any future agenda items for our next regular scheduled uh, meeting at this time that they would like to bring up? Okay, if you come up with something between now and then, just please shoot me an email and I'd be happy to look into it and um, get get that on the agenda. Okay, well, if there's, I guess that is it. So I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All right. Thank you, everyone. Have a good Thank night. You.